go again with these good morning everybody welcome back to my channel happy monday happy whatever day of the week it is for you but happy monday for me today i decided to do a video of day in the life of a school nurse just to kind of see what a school nurse does i feel like every school nurse does something different depending on your school depending on your district your city your state wherever it is you work and so i just figured since this is my day as I'm watching my kinder school, kindergarten teacher pull up in front of me right now. I'm just going to pretend like I don't see her. And when I talk to her in school, I'm going to pretend like I was FaceTiming, even though my phone is sideways. But mind your business. Anyways, today I'm just going to do a day in the life of a school nurse video. And we'll see how that goes. So I'm about to go clock in and get settled in my office. So I'll take you guys along with me and just kind of explain like what it is I do. So let's go. Usually I have my door open, but while I'm recording this, I kind of just wanted to close it before people start coming in and saying stuff. So now I clocked in. Oh, you're falling. You have a very interesting setup here on a water bottle and a tissue box. Don't fall. So typically in the mornings when I get to work, I service whatever kids I need to service for that morning. So for me, I have a diabetic student that comes on the school bus. So when they arrive, I check their blood sugar when they first arrive to make sure that they're stable, have medication to take daily if they eat food. So if they decide to eat breakfast, then I will give them the medication they take with every single meal. So I'll do that in the mornings. And then usually mornings are also a time to catch parents, give them paperwork if they need to sign certain things, like for me to administer medication or if I discovered a kid has asthma or whatever, for whatever reason. Like, so basically as a school nurse, like any kid that has any type of diagnosis, like asthma, ADHD, whatever you have, diabetes, no matter what, if you have something that requires medical care, if you're on some sort of medication, then you would be on my caseload and so that's for me to follow up with you if you need you know your asthma inhaler administer for me to help you know the little ones I'm in an elementary school I would help them administer it and follow up with parents because a lot of the times parents you know don't always know the right questions to ask doctors they don't no, like one kid, I actually had a girl that is on my case all now and she was coming to me complaining of like rib pain when she was running. And then I wrote her a referral explaining like what was going on with her and she took it to the doctor and with her mother and they discovered she ended up having asthma. So as a school nurse, you're kind of keeping eyes on all of your kids and kind of educating your parents on what they need to do and what's going on and stuff like that. And then of course, servicing kids, like kids who take ADHD medication in the school during the day, I administer that if they take like an afternoon dose, some parents prefer them to take it during the day in the morning, but here, but sometimes they take it at home before they come to school. And then also it's important to follow up because you're, you are also your student's advocate even to their parents, um, just keeping them aware of side effects of certain medications. So even if there's some kids that have ADHD that only take it in the morning at home, and so I don't really like see them on a daily basis, but I'm following up with the teachers asking them, do you feel like this medication is working? Following up with, like I'm kind of keeping eyes and ears for the parents, the teachers asking the parents like, oh, are they having any side effects? Oh yeah, no, that's not normal. Are they having trouble sleeping or what's going on? Or just being their eyes and ears. And sometimes it ends up coming out that, oh no, they are struggling throughout the year and we're considering an afternoon dose. So now that I've been following you, I can 
just, and you're on my case, so it's easier for me to know your history and just give you the paperwork and get the necessary documentation to do that. So I'm doing stuff like that in the morning sometimes. Like if I'm following up with parents, if I see them coming in and drop kids off, there's always kids that not always praise God don't happen today but and it doesn't happen that much but typically there can sometimes be kids that come in and they're sick first thing in the morning and I'm like did you tell your mommy and daddy and they're just like I don't know no and so there's that as well this is the beginning of the school year this is September 30th today what I was doing in the morning as well as part of the school nurse's duty for my school we are entering physicals like the school physicals and immunizations into our system the goal is to get 100% compliance for all kids to be what we call compliant with all of their vaccines even if you have exemption like religious exemption or whatever exemption we need to just have the documentation of that and then you're compliant but for everybody else like if you're getting your vaccinations then we need you to be 100 percent compliant and that's the goal so i enter everything i have and then nurses we have access to i'm in illinois i'm in chicago so it's like illinois department of health like where i can go online and like look up their vaccine records for parents because sometimes for some reason parents don't always bring in the vaccine records so that takes me extra time to have to go in and search them however i can't search a physical like doctors do have to hand write in like vital signs and notes and like check off if you know they have any issues and hand write stuff in so parents do have to bring in health exams so that i still have to like write letters for but right now my to-do list is to look at all the kids who are not compliant in our system and then go into the illinois system and just for immunizations and see like if they're up to date once i'm done with that towards the end of the week i'm going to print out letters for all the students now that i have all my up-to-date vaccine records i'm going to go into our system and say like oh okay john smith yeah no you I, you didn't give me any immunization records i looked online and it says you also didn't get these shots so i'm going to check off you need your tdap and your hepatitis whatever shots like then i'll give those letters home but right now because sometimes parents end up getting confused like oh well i got on the shots why is the nurse sending me a letter well because you didn't give me the shots and i can't pull them out my butt i gotta go online and search them but it doesn't always pop up correctly so either way that's what i'm planning to do today also as a school nurse part of our duties we we do the 504 plans like in order to be on my case load, like you have to either have a 504 plan or an IEP I will insert the definition of those things here because I'm terrible at explaining them but 504 basically you don't need any extras like you're you're already doing well in school like you don't have any issues academically IEPs are for kids who have a diagnosis and there's or not necessarily a diagnosis but you're struggling academically for IEP so um i do have a kid i have an iep that's going to be due soon so, like he's in special education courses and the student has adhd so i need to work on writing up his iep and then also part of ieps are to observe kids in class so you just kind of go in and you just sit there and you pretend like you're just doing your work or i say i'm here to learn so there's a kindergarten student who we're doing an initial evaluation for them and so i need to go and just sit there and observe her because that's part of my report because say for example if it was like ADHD for you know a fifth grader and they're concerned about that then I need to go on the class and sit there and observe and see like what are the behaviors that the teacher is reporting and so it's not just me it's all the clinicians the social worker the psychologist the speech pathologist everybody the nurse we all do our own observations and our own summaries and reports and research on the kid and figure out what the recommendations would be so yeah um right now it's 802 I heard the bell ring a few minutes ago so I'm just waiting on my kid to come. Usually sometimes he'll come to me if I'm late coming in. He knows I'll go find him. So usually I'll give him to like 820. And if he doesn't come straight to me, then I'll go find him in class and just check his blood sugar, ask him if he ate breakfast at home or if he's eating here and what's the deal. And yeah, that's it. I don't currently have any kids that I'm giving the morning ADHD medication to just afternoon. So my mornings are pretty somewhat peaceful. I don't wanna use the Q word in nursing as you know but yeah that's what i'm gonna get to right now also that's the beauty of school nursing sometimes you get to have a moment of peace in the morning sometimes or at least you can find a, a nugget of like sitting down in your office also mind you my office is somewhat of a broom closet i know it, it's not big at all what you see you see how far away i am from you like the wall is right there 
it's right there so it's not very big at all but i really can't complain it's a small school i only have 208 kids i think on the roster for the whole school and i can't complain i love the people i work with i love the school i love the principal i love my kids so i really can't complain but other bigger schools like i shadowed at a really big school when i was on orientation and they had like a whole nursing like suite like they had a a whole suite like when kids get sick or they need a moment to like put their heads down they have a headache i don't have anywhere to put them like she had rooms like two rooms with like like exam rooms and i was like what is this like i've never seen this before so yeah it's it's different depending on where you go you never know what you're gonna get so i will try to film as much as i can and like update you on what i'm doing but right now i'm just gonna get settled have some breakfast and start opening up records outside of my office door and I don't want them to be like girl what are you doing also if you see me like with my glasses on and off it's because I need them to see far but not close and like if I use them on my computer all day I'll get a headache or like reading stuff up close but what I'm doing is I was just going online like I said my diabetic student already came by today he had his glucose monitor with him sometimes he forgets it and then we have to like just do finger prick finger pricks to check his blood sugar but it was quick he wasn't eating breakfast he already ate breakfast at home so that's done that's kind of the beauty of school nursing you get to kind of sometimes dictate your own schedule like you have a to-do list and things you know you need to get done but like today i know i have some parents to call at some point but it's monday morning i don't really feel like talking to anybody <laughs> So I know I but this compliance thing is really important to get done anyway So I can just spend some time on a computer getting in the Monday mood zoning out listening to something while I do what I'm doing But I just for example, there's a kid that is new here And I just went online to get some vaccine records for him And so I printed them out and then I'm entering them into the system printing them out And then I have to do one of these like health folders for the student and like start a new health folder write their name on there and put this in my file cabinet right there where I keep all of the health records of all the students. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. And I'll keep doing that for a little while. And then probably when I feel like I need a break, I do have to go observe this kid in kindergarten. So I'll probably go observe the kindergartner when I feel like I'm just tired of staring at the computer and just go see what's going on in there. And then it'll be close to lunch and recess time. Lunch and recess is at 11 a.m. from like 11 to 12 when all the other teachers and clinicians go on lunch break i typically don't because i'm servicing my diabetic kid like giving medication checking blood sugar and i have to go get some kids their inhalers before recess and then on top of that i don't take lunch because that's when kids are going outside to recess and getting injured and coming into me and complaining that they're bleeding or whatever happens so i typically try to stay put until after that and then i do have a kid i have to give adhd medication to right after lunch sometimes i have days where i have kids that have gym later on in the day and I have to give them in their inhaler again later on. So I kind of try to plan my lunch in between those times, but that's like my bit my busier time of day servicing my actual kids is like later on. Also interesting to note that I am I want to say blessed, but you know it's not a blessing that this kid is sick, but I am blessed to just be at this one school. This is not typical. A lot of school nurses float to different schools, like LPNs that do a lot of direct services, they tend to go to school to school to school to do those direct services, whether it be give medications or G2 feedings or whatever. But because I have a diabetic student at my school, I'm here five days a week because he needs servicing constantly throughout the day. So yeah, and I'll try to film as much as possible because you know, HIPAA, I really <laughs> can't say that much anyway or like show that much. But just to give you an idea of what a school nurse does. And if you have any questions about school nursing, let me know in the comments. I do my best to answer because I know not all school nursing is really the same. Yeah. 
I'll just do my best. I've been doing this since I was like five months pregnant when I started doing this job in December of 2022. And yeah, I've been at the same school since and I've been blessed to be here ever since, blessed to work with people I work with. But um, as you can tell from the title, I know I'm gonna put in here something about mom guilt, which is heavy on me today, but I'll get into that a little later. But I'm gonna work on this stuff a little bit more and get this kiddo into our system. kid was absent today so I went to go give her her inhaler but she's not here so I'm gonna go to my other kid. So now it's 10 58 it's pretty much 11 o'clock. Usually I go to give my kids their inhalers again because it's a small school. If it was a bigger school where it was like really far away or if it's like high school you can expect kids to probably just be responsible enough to come to you themselves but one kid I see is a second grader so very small and I give them their inhaler and like sometimes they remember sometimes they forget and it's you know the teachers have a lot going on so I just go and make sure I get it done. The other kid was absent Okay, I stopped myself because a kid came in just asked for a band-aid, that's all. But yeah, what was I saying? If it's a bigger school, no one's walking around to do that. And if they were older kids, they can be responsible enough to do it. But And then I had my diabetics medication set up for him. So by the time I came back down, it was already set up for him to take. So we just did the normal nursing things you have to do before you administer medication. He was able to take it and go because like I'd like to be set up so they can go because they only have... A limited amount of time for lunch and recess and i don't need kids getting piled up in my office because i'm not set up so i actually like yeah usually set him up before i go to give the inhalers so by the time i come back he's like just able to take his medicine and if i needed to prick his finger to check his blood sugar i could have but i didn't because he had the, the monitor which makes it even quicker now it's 11 kids are going to recess i'm prepared for kids to come in and out possibly with you know boo-boos from recess or whatever i'm just gonna keep working on my stack of letters i have a decent enough stack here here i'll show you i have a decent stack of letters as you can see without showing you what's on the other side with the private information we yeah, have a decent stack here and i'm gonna keep working on those letters during lunch and recess time and i don't know that's kind of become my main focus of the day i still haven't gone to observe the little girl yet because i kind of was in my zone doing the paperwork and it is something i really need to get done but this is just my typical day, I guess you can say, for the beginning of the school year because I'm not always focused on this part of it as paperwork. So usually I'm doing other things or later on in the school year, there may be more meetings and things scheduled that I'm going to like setting up 504 meetings or doing the 504s for kids who have asthma, whether it's kids that are new kids coming in with asthma or kids that were already on my caseload, but you have to do a new report for them annually, if that makes sense. So usually there's more meetings like that throughout the school year that I might be doing during these times that could be randomly scheduled or like I said I'm calling parents for different reasons getting more information about these kiddos or calling parents because kids are sick or things like that but this morning was pretty much like a good paperwork morning but actually what I am going to do is call my diabetics parent to let them know that I need more medication for him because that's something because some parents are on it and they like know exactly down to the pill like what they have left and other parents you just call and give them a reminder so I'm going to do that and then work on the paperwork again I just had to walk to the gym to get one of my kids um, a medication because I got caught up with like getting ice for other students that were but the ice I was out of ice and I forgot to get some more so I was busy doing that and giving them ice and then before I knew it 12 o'clock hits really quick and then that class goes to gym and the gym is a bit of a walk to get to so I just did that and now I'm actually done with services for kids for the day. I just have to check a blood sugar at the end of the day um, before my kid leaves to get on the bus, but that's it. I just have to finish working on that stack of papers for the day today, so I'm gonna get to that. Okay, coming back to you many hours later. It is almost the end of my day. Don't mind this cute little cat picture that I think my social worker who I share like a wall with her office is next door to me she drew that like last school year 
and she gave it to me and I was like well I'm gonna leave it there and I did and it's been sitting there <laughs> since like I don't know February but anyways today was a very paperwork filled day if you hear voices don't mind it's because like I have my window right there but anyways today has been a day filled with paperwork I've been really going through this stack like I'm on letter H I think out of the whole school like I got from A through H of like doing non-compliant letters if, um, and doing like a record review online to see if they have gotten vaccines but the parent just didn't submit the vaccine record to me which takes time is very time consuming which is why you're supposed to just give it to the nurse because compliance is important um so i've been doing that all day today i did have some kids that came in like with a cough but no fever headaches things like that but of course i'm not gonna like show the kids or anything but today was a beautiful blessed day so far it's only like seven minutes left of school so usually it can be a lot more busy oh there was oh kids coming in with getting hit at recess one thing i forgot was it's so interesting with school nursing because it all just depends on how your school works and again my school is a small school so i usually like for example it's funny i go get the ice or last year the ice machine was broken so i had to make the ice but usually i walk to the cafeteria and get the ice and i realized all these kids were coming to me from recess and I, of course asking for ice every time they get hit with the ball they want ice but yeah I, w I had to go like walk and get ice and come back and then give ice to a few kids that got hit with the ball they really don't need ice but it's just for their little comforts and stuff but that's pretty much it yeah I think that was it for most of my day and I've just been doing a whole a whole a whole lot of paperwork and then talking about you know with my case manager about future meetings and um kids who need to be evaluated and services and just talking about stuff but that was pretty much it for the day today so i am going to catch you when i get home yesterday I don't know I was already starting to upload the footage into my computer to edit and then I noticed first of all I don't know I'm trying to like record the long way and like even when I'm holding my phone this way it like doesn't register that I'm holding it this way and so I'm filming this way and it's still recording it the so I'm sorry for all the clips it's like back and forth between this and this and I didn't even realize that so yeah I'm gonna figure that out and I hope that this one is recording sideways because I'm pretty sure it is anyways yeah I didn't get that much footage yesterday I think today is also gonna be a paperwork day too so there may not be as much to show again but I did want to touch on the topic of mom guilt because I was gonna record last night but honey like I've been waking up every day at like 4 30 in the morning because I wanted to give myself time to edit like I'd wake up wide awake but honestly by eight o'clock last night i was exhausted so i kind of fell asleep around like 9 9 30 and i was straightening up the house so i didn't have a time and i was looking rough like i'm already looking rough this morning forgive my edges i don't like to put too much gel in here because it gets like hard and fuzzy sometimes but like i tried a sister a sister tried today but anyways i was looking rough by the end of the day and i did not feel like getting myself together to come back on here so i figured i'd just come to work today and tell y'all what i was gonna say last weekend over the weekend today's tuesday so sunday i was so focused on getting everything together getting my life together cooking and cleaning and doing the laundry my child was entertaining herself for a little while so I took advantage of that but then it was nap time and usually she naps well like even at bedtime I just put her in the bed and she goes to sleep praise God 
But for some reason, this nap time, she really just wanted to like nap on me. I was like, well, what? I laid her in the crib and she cried, which she never does for nap time. So I'm like, did you poop? Are you still hungry? Are you thirsty? What is it? So I was trying everything out, checking her diaper and nothing was the matter. So I just sat in the rocking chair with her. As soon as I like laid her on me, like she just started to fall asleep, which she typically doesn't do because she likes to be able to lay out and stretch out in her crib. And so I was kind of like annoyed in the moment, not annoyed, but I was I was content for a few minutes I'm like I don't mind rocking with her but then after like five minutes I'm thinking like okay I cannot stay here I have things I got to do like I wanted to shower like I was I you know when you really need to shower I was like I need to shower I meant to do this earlier but I didn't have a chance I wanted to like finish cooking cleaning like doing things because my plan was to take her out later on that day to like the park or something like I really wanted to take her out and get her out the house and I wanted to make her lunch and plan her dinner and stuff while she napped but because she just wanted to nap on me I was like what the heck like I can't get anything done that I wanted to get done and it's like a matter of I, I regretted it immediately because what ended up happening was she napped on me for like 20 minutes and then I got up to put her in the crib because usually if she like lays on me for a few minutes and she relaxes her body then she wants to lay in the crib but she still didn't. She was still like, no, don't let me go. And so I picked her back up and I was gonna lay her down back on me to finish napping, but I was like, at least let me get my phone so I can listen to Audible and an audiobook or something or like get a snack. Cause I was hungry. I didn't even eat all that. Like I, I barely ate breakfast and I was starving for lunch. So I was like, let me just stuff something in my mouth and then I can lay here for the next hour, hour and a half with you. But at that point she woke up and so she was not going back to sleep and so she took a terrible 20 minute nap and then I woke her up. But in that moment I felt guilty because it's just a reminder to slow down. Like none of that other stuff was that important compared to spending time with my child. And that's the thing about like getting wrapped up with being a working mom, like doing all this stuff, is you sometimes think that all those little things matter more when in reality I'm just grateful that she's still little right now and I still have the opportunity to cuddle with her and do those things because when she's older I won't even remember all the chores I got done that day I'm just gonna remember that nap that I got to take with her because one day she won't even want to do that stuff with me anymore and I won't be able to and she won't be this little so I just felt so guilty the rest of the day and then it also made me think I'm like since she doesn't do that maybe it's because I went back to work I started to think that she associated me putting her to bed with me not being there anymore because when I put her to bed at night Usually I'm not there in the morning to wake her up because I used to be when she would wake up at six, but now she's not waking up till after seven. And so like, I'm already gone by then for work. And then even with nap time, sometimes like my husband will wake her up instead of me or my mother-in-law might come over while she takes a nap so I can go and like run an errand or something and get something done during the middle of the day. And so then I may not be there when she wakes up. So that's what I was thinking. I was like, maybe she's finally gotten the picture that when you put me down to sleep, you don't always be here when I wake up and I won't stand for it. I need to know where you're at. So I don't know if that's what it was. But then again, when I came home from work yesterday, my mother-in-law said that Mia wouldn't even let my mother-in-law put her to bed for a nap. Like she refused to and she just was crying and crying and crying. And I have no idea what that was or like where that came from because she has been napping on her own for at least, I mean, now it's, today is October 1st now and she's been napping on her own since January of this year, so like almost 10 months she's been napping by herself. So I don't know what the change is or where it came from, but either way, it doesn't matter. And I do just realize like all this complaining I do about wanting to be at home, be a stay at home mom. I'm over here doing this video about a day in the life of a school nurse, but I'm like, really, I wanna be a homemaker, but either way. And then I, when I get to be at home with my baby, I'm just like, girl, I gotta do the chores, but it's not like life is really, life is just not, really about that you know so yeah that's why I had the mom guilt but praise God I just feel like God is so good and but I'm blessed to have the job that I have and leaning on him for my strength and my peace has given me way stronger of a peace than I could have ever gotten on my own like I was so anxious and I had so much like sadness leaving her at first but now just focusing on God and the season that he has me in and realizing that this is where he has me. This is his strategic plan for me and really leaning on him and talking to him. And it gives me peace because although I have a desire to do something else, he has me planted right here for now for a reason. And I couldn't be planted in a better place. So yeah, I just feel peace now doing what I'm doing. And actually I'm gonna do a video on that. I don't know if it'll be my next video about girls stop complaining. Like I looked at all my previous videos and I was like, girl, 
we do a lot of complaining like let the people know you're not just a complainer like you're a little more than that but anyway that's enough talking i should probably do my job gonna get to work i'm just gonna honestly pick up where i left off at yesterday doing the paperwork yeah listening to late lately i've been listening to this audiobook by stephanie ek okafor can you tell i'm obsessed with her because if you've watched any of my other videos i've talked about this lady so yeah i'm going to either listen i'm just gonna listen to that audiobook while i do this paperwork and then eat my little breakfast here well actually your setup is on my breakfast smoothie but while i'm doing the paperwork i'm gonna do a snack this is apples and i'm on the apple seed in there but apples and peanut butter and then i'm finishing my little breakfast smoothie too so yeah let me let me do the job that i was paid here to do i'm paid to do here this is one semi-interesting factor of something that i have to do today i have a student who was diagnosed with adhd so he is going to start taking medication daily at school parents are amazing and they already sent me the paperwork so i have to turn all the paperwork out let, and thankfully his parents you know they they respond via email so sometimes you have to call but they're amazing even with email so you're gonna email him back they ask when they can drop off the meds they can drop them off at any time when students take medications at school it has to be in the original pill bottle like sometimes people will like try to keep half at home and half here and they'll bring you the pills in any old bottle or any old bag and you can't do that like you need to be able to see the name the prescription the date like to know what this medication is dosage and time of day the, all that stuff on the pill bottle so they can drop them off and then as a nurse you're supposed to lock medications up to keep them secure especially controlled substances like ADHD medications so I'll lock the medication up and then this kid is going to stop start stopping by my office every single morning for his daily dose of medication. And then we have we have a physical log book that we use to it's it's just kind of to help the nurses to keep track of who's getting what. So like if you get folded to a different school, you know who's getting what, if that makes sense. So like you can just walk in and find the binder and be able to um like open it up and scroll through and like see who's getting what and so you can like physically write it down so it's a lot easier to keep track of like you know blood sugars and who gave the medication and what versus like doing it on the computer because some schools have like designated people who are not nurses that give medication and they don't like have access to our online system so then it's nice to see like everybody's keeping track. it's just a way for everybody a, a way of keeping track um of paper charting to keep track of who's giving kids medications um since it's not like a hospital and everybody has the same access to everything it's not the same that way everybody like you know the teachers and the counselors and whoever else can legally give medication they don't have the same nursing access to, so to keep one secure way of giving medication we also have a log book so you have to like create a mar for them like i print out a paper that's like a mar the medication administration record which is electronic as well especially in the hospitals but here we have a paper form just so everybody can keep up so i have to do that for him today email his dad let him know that he can drop it off whenever he would like to i will be here and yeah that's something interesting to know about what we do on a daily basis or changes that are being made this kid already also was on my caseload if this kid was not on my caseload this would be a whole like we got to open up a whole we do it i've already evaluated this kid he's already on my caseload i haven't given him his medication yet but now i can do that so yeah you would feel so dumb if you had like the dumbest spelling mistake that's me
Remember how I said I looked rough at the end of the day yesterday and that's why I didn't end it? Well, here's another day. Another day we still look rough by the end of the day, but I need to end this vlog. I feel like these last few days, I guess it's, it's the beginning of the school year. It's really been a lot of focus on getting like all the records in and all that basic stuff. So yeah, and then I have kids coming in and out, but I can't really show them. So either way, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments about like school nursing or anything about me, my life, any ideas on videos you want me to post, let me know. It's only a ripe 8, 16 p.m. and I'd be tired. But only like I said, because I do get up pretty early, so yeah. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this shower and try to edit as much as possible before I fall asleep. When I tell you, I appreciate you genuinely from the bottom of my heart. If you subscribe to my channel, like my video, share my video, do whatever. Like I really, really appreciate you. I'm trying to be as consistent on here as possible. And I feel like I forgot. I definitely forgot in my other video to end the pray for me while I pray for you because I just want to, I always just want to pray that people feel the peace of the Holy Spirit. I don't know why that's what always comes to my mind, but just a peace that surpasses all understanding because I just feel like we're in times right now where everybody is so anxious about, I'm in right by they, and I mean we, I mean me, to be honest, just anxious about where we're going in life. I'm in just what we're doing or whatever anxieties you have in your life towards your kids, your family, whatever. I just feel like we all be anxious about something, your job. So I just pray that you feel peace and that God works through you. I pray that you feel the Lord in his presence and that as you seek him and you pray to him, you bear much fruit in your life and that he strengthens you and that he gives you rest when you need it, okay? Because we be needing rest anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that I can turn this into something because I have no idea what this footage is really gonna look like. But thank you so much and I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.